What up guys, coming at you with another AMA this week. Thank you so much for leaving your questions and comments below. I'm gonna get to tons of your questions today. As always, we're brought to you by Santa Cruz Paleo. Our electrolytes are back in stock. They sell out very fast. So go to santacruzpaleo.com and get some goodies. Any two items you buy, you can save 10%. Just use the code Santa Cruz 10. You know, maybe you get the magnesium and electrolytes. Maybe you get a protein and electrolytes or food of the gods and electrolytes, whatever you wanna get. You can get 10% off, go to santacruzpaleo.com. Let's dive into this week's AMA and get some of the questions. This question is Brennan, are the dyes, the artificial dyes in clothing a concern? Like if I have a blue shirt, is that a concern? The short answer is no. I do not think artificial food dyes in clothing, which there are some blue one and red 40 in clothing. I do not think that is the same as ingesting them, especially on a daily basis, like many people do with the foods and drinks that they consume. I've even seen the research on polyester clothing maybe being bad for you in some way, and I think it's interesting, but I do not think it's of much concern. Just wear clothes, wear what you wanna wear. The next question is, Brendan, is a calorie deficit safe for teenagers? So the short answer is, if you are overweight, it is more safe than not to go into a calorie deficit short term. Losing body fat is essential for you know optimal human health. So if you're overweight, yes. If you are underweight, I would not do a calorie deficit and I would absolutely not cut to get lean if you are young. You should focus on lifting weights, maintaining your body weight, or even gaining some weight if you're you know very lean and skinny. If you are overweight, you should get down to a healthy weight and you can do that with a calorie deficit. The next question is, Brendan, are there foods that have been invented in recent years that are good for us? Because I talk about a lot about ancestral dieting and you know eating unprocessed foods. Are there any sort of new foods that are invented? So first of all, I'm not against, you know, basically normal GMO foods. What I mean by this is when they you know cross different types of species of fruits and vegetables. I don't think there's any real issue with that, first of all. And then also we get into some of the protein powders that have been created. Some of the processing of some foods is minimal processing and it's not that bad. I don't think we have to eat exactly like our ancestors. You should take advantage of some technology. As far as the technology going towards basically fake meat, which is soy, wheat, seed oils, sugar, or pea protein, stuff like that, I think those are heavily processed foods that I'd wanna stay away from and I think we've really gotten just completely off uh, kilter there. And so, yeah, I don't think any new invention is bad. The next question is, Brennan, have you seen the new study saying sucralose is genotoxic and it should be avoided? I have seen it and honestly, the study isn't that well done. I would love for it to be well done because I'm not a fan of sucralose. Why I'm not a fan of sucralose is its potential negative effects on our gut microbiome. There are some studies showing that it basically sways our gut microbiome into not a favorable environment. We don't really know that much about the gut microbiome, but we do know that for many people when they consume aspartame, sucralose, stuff like that, they get Get headaches and some nausea. This is well reported. Now, I think if you are quitting normal soda, which is high fructose corn syrup soda, and you go towards one of these, you know, low or no calorie sweeteners, I think that could be a benefit. But if you're just a normal person, and you're just like, well, I'm just gonna eat a bunch of sucralose and aspartame and I don't think there's any problems with it. I disagree with that. I think in the next five to 10 years, we will learn more about the gut microbiome and it will not pan out well for aspartame and sucralose but we will see. The next question is, Brendan, what is your opinion on cheap eggs? I'm in college right now and I need to save money. So eggs are actually one of the most nutrient dense foods you can get for a very affordable price. I wouldn't worry too much about getting cheap eggs. Obviously the gold standard of eggs are gonna be organic pasture raised eggs fed corn and soy free feed. That is the gold standard. You do not need to get that. In fact, when I'm traveling, one of the foods that I go towards is eggs. And this is because it's extremely nutrient dense. You're still gonna get a lot of the choline and B vitamins from egg yolks and a lot of the protein from egg whites. So I wouldn't worry too much about it. I would say try to get higher quality eggs because that price difference isn't that crazy. The $3.99 carton of eggs is not that, you know, f spending $4.99 or $5.99 on some eggs, it's not a crazy price difference. I would go for that price range personally but do what you can and yeah, they're totally good. The next question is, Brendan, is chorizo healthy for you? So we just did a whole podcast on red meat and it does appear that processed meat in general is not ideal for your health. Now, do I think eating it occasionally is going to cause heart disease or colon cancer? No, not at all. So if you enjoy it, I would just sort of limit it a bit and try to eat unprocessed meat more 
but I don't think it's some evil food or gonna kill you, but it is a processed meat. The next question is, Brendan, how do I increase my cardiovascular endurance? Because when I try to run, it hurts my joints. What can I do for cardio? I'm gonna give you a protocol right now. What you want to do is get an assault bike or get access to an assault bike. These are in CrossFit gyms. These are in a lot of different gyms nowadays. So try to find one of them. The other protocol I'm gonna give you is through swimming. So you need to find a pool or a bike. What you're going to do is you're gonna get on that bike and you're gonna go 30 to 45 seconds all out. You're gonna go as hard as you possibly can. And then you're gonna go 20 seconds just easy, maybe hands off on the assault bike, just easy breathing, breathing through your nose. Then you're gonna go another 30 to 45 seconds as hard as you can. You're gonna repeat this basically as many times as you can. Try to get between six to 10 rounds, it's brutal. For swimming, what you're gonna do is you're gonna swim a, a lap as hard as you can. If it's a small pool, you're gonna go there and back. Then you're gonna rest for 20 seconds and you're gonna do it again. Do six to eight rounds of that. That is how you can increase your cardiovascular endurance without you know, running. So. That's a good protocol right there, try it out. Tag me if you do. The next question is, Brennan, can a 14 year old consume protein powder? It's so funny, we get a lot of these questions of people saying, can I take supplements at this age? Can I take supplements at this? Supplements is such a broad term. First of all, if you're young, you need to dial in your nutrition, your exercise and your sleep. That is the main thing. You do not need any supplements. However, a supplement like this, it's, I mean, it's hard to call it a supplement. This is basically a fully functional food. This is grass fed, grass finished beef isolate protein. It's not even that much like a supplement. These electrolytes right here, for example, you can find sodium, potassium, and magnesium in foods. Now we just kind of concentrate them here to make it a really good supplement that you can take when you're working out so you don't have to, you know, eat a bunch of bananas and then, you know, try to find some sodium and magnesium, which dietary magnesium is sort of hard to come by. So these are sort of not like supplements. Creatine, for example, creatine is in red meat, fish, and eggs. You're ingesting creatine if you eat those foods. If you choose to supplement with it, that's on you but there's sort of differences between the supplement, so it's kind of a broad question. The next question is, Brendan, what do you think about the supplement CoQ10? So this has become very popular in the last two years, especially because of all the stuff that happened. People are concerned about their heart health. We see Bronnie James actually just you know dropping from cardiac arrest. CoQ10 is very protective for the heart, and I do think it's a pretty good supplement for athletes. It's definitely not something that's essential. You don't need to take CoQ10. You don't need to take any supplements, but CoQ10 is also rich in actual heart. So like beef heart um, is an organ that is very rich in CoQ10. And there are some benefits for your ATP production, your mitochondrial health. I like CoQ10, it's something I've taken before. It's something I'm looking into more and more. I think it's a pretty good supplement overall. The next question is, Brennan, if you had to choose aspartame soda or sugar soda, what would I choose? I would actually go with the aspartame soda if I had to choose. I'd be pissed. I don't want to make that choice. I don't have to make that choice. But if you really want to think about it, chugging high fructose corn syrup, we know for a fact, thousands of studies that chugging high fructose corn syrup is not good for your health whatsoever. Aspartame is pretty debated. I do not think it's good for human health, but it's debatable. And I think I would have to go with aspartame. The next question is, Brennan, where can I buy raw dairy products? I'm looking to get some raw milk, raw cheese, all that. So I just toured a raw dairy farm. And what I will say is, you probably don't want to just get some random raw dairy. There are concerns with raw dairy. If there is bad bacteria in the milk or cheese that you're eating, you can get very ill. And raw milk, because it's sort of become this you know, trendy health thing, I wouldn't be surprised if there's some bad sources of raw milk out there. And there's really not too many you know, lost nutrients in the pasteurization process. I think there's some enzymes lost. I do think there is some nutrients lost. But I don't think pasteurized dairy is, you know, so far worse than raw milk. However, there is a farm, raw farm, which does test their raw milk batch by batch. It's one of the cleanest farms I've ever seen. They have very unique processes to where the cows are cleaned, the udders are cleaned, and then the milk is tested. It's insane how like in depth they go. If you can get your hands on raw farm uh, products, which I, I would, you just go to their website and try to see if it's in a store near you. They're sold in sprouts around here. Get that if you want to try raw milk, but I really wouldn't recommend any other random sources of raw milk. The next question is, Brendan, what are your thoughts on Olipop, which is a soda alternative, a prebiotic drink? I think it's a pretty good option. There are a few grams of sugar in it, but I don't think that's the end of the world. What I would say is it's a good option if you're trying to quit soda. If you are dialed in right now and all you drink is like water, maybe some black coffee, maybe you have some electrolytes, I wouldn't like go towards drinking Olipop. Now it does have prebiotics, which can be beneficial, but they're, I think they're from chicory root fiber. Eh, you know, I prefer to get my prebiotics from, you know, fruits, vegetables, stuff like that, fermented veggies. So I'm not like a huge fan of Olipop, but if you're trying to quit soda and that is what is helping, tremendous win right there. Good job. The next question is, Brendan, how can I grow taller as a 16-year-old? Your mom's 5'2", your dad's 5'6", you want to grow tall. 
First of all, why are you asking me, man? I'm 5'8". It didn't work out for me. No, I'm just joking. So the actual research stuff is sleep. You need to get good sleep. I see so many of these scam products on TikTok, these vitamins that claim they're gonna make you taller. It's not gonna happen. Yes, good nutrition can definitely help you grow and you should be getting good nutrition, but there's no vitamin that's gonna help you grow. It doesn't work like that. The most researched thing is sleep. This is gonna improve your natural levels of human growth hormone, which can help you grow taller. So get good sleep, prioritize your sleep. Get eight to nine hours, it's really good for you. The next question is, Brennan, what are your thoughts on tofu? So tofu is soy protein. I'm not a fan of it at all. And you'll see a lot of people touting studies that soy protein is totally good, it's bioavailable, it's great. Man, go eat tofu if you want. See how you feel. If you feel great, and you're honest with yourself, cool, keep eating tofu. I have seen so many people, person after person, who eats tofu and they feel horrible. There's many different reasons for that. It might be the lectins in soy. Who knows, it might be the phytic acid in soy. I don't know, but I would not eat tofu. The next question is, Brennan, what do you think about me switching from eating beef to eating bison because bison is leaner? So I really wouldn't do that unless you're on some crazy cut or like calorie deficit and you're really trying to fight to reduce your amount of calories. Sure, bison can be leaner. It's easier to find in that 93 to seven uh, ratio or you know what I mean? Like 95 to five ratio. But honestly, a lot of the nutrients come from fat. Just get, you know, 85, 15 ground beef and you're going to actually feel more satiated from those healthy fats. I know it's, you know, more calories in those fats, but it's not something I would really do. I like bison. I eat it sometimes, but I wouldn't make that complete change. The next question is, Brennan, is 100% organic Italian pasta, basically, is it bad for you? Okay, let's get into it. So, I think it's a way better option than just pasta that is bought at or any traditional grocery store in the United States. First of all, we have less, I mean, pretty much no glyphosate use in Italy, and we have a lot of glyphosate sprayed on our crops in the United States. However, I don't think eating wheat really is the best thing for gut health. We see an increase in this protein called zonulin, which can contribute to leaky gut. We see gluten, gliadin, not really a fan of it. You can read the book Wheat Belly and look into some of the stuff around wheat. Some people react way better to it than others, so if you feel great eating it, go for it. I don't really have anything against that, but for most people, it's gonna contribute to leaky gut, brain fog, and not make them feel good. The next question is Brendan, ice cream. It's summer, they probably want some ice cream. Do you know any good ice cream brands that, with just natural ingredients? So, I prefer to make my own ice cream, personally. There is no better ice cream than uh, on the store shelves than you will be able to make. And I posted a recipe on this. You can get an ice cream maker, and you can almost make any like milkshake into an ice cream. So what I like to do is take raw milk, raw cream, some frozen fruit. You can even put a scoop of protein in there, and you can make an ice cream that's gonna be far better than anything you can buy on the shelves. I know there's some of these low-calorie ice creams and stuff like that, but looking at the ingredients in there, there's still like a lot of emulsifiers, um, which you know aren't that bad, whatever, some of them. But the main thing is these gums. You see guar gum, carrageen, which is a known gut disruptor. Not really a fan of most of the ice cream brands on shelves. The next question is, Brendan, the raw milk you get, do you cook it before you drink it or do you just drink it raw? I just drink it raw. Um, obviously it's tested, we've gone through this with Raw Farm, I just drink it raw. I feel absolutely amazing when I drink it. It's a good probiotic beverage, so I just drink it raw. The next question is, Brendan, did you watch the movie Oppenheimer? I did, I just watched it last night with my girlfriend. It was really good, I thought it was great. It was a long movie. Uh, you know, me, uh, I like to move around and stuff. It's sort of hard for me to sit there for three hours, but the movie was great, and I think it's really important to understand that time in U.S. history and to know U.S. history and the history of the world wars in general. It's very important stuff. I thought it was good. Let me know what you thought below. The next question is, Brennan, what do you think about unconventional sports such as skateboarding? So I'm actually a huge fan of these, and I'll tell you why. So traditional team sports are great. I'm a huge fan of them. I played soccer growing up. I did track, um, and now I do jujitsu, which isn't a team sport. But having these sports that have some aspect of individuality and style really is crucial for rewiring your brain and allowing yourself to express creativity. With stuff you do in life where you want to have success, like I run this company, right? If you can't be individual and express creativity within the actions you do, you're gonna be fucked. You're just not gonna succeed in life. Sports like skateboarding, surfing, even jujitsu, you're allowed to have style and creativity, and this is key. It actually helps these neural grooves of how to have style, and also helps with problem solving. It's a, you know, if you're trying to land a kickflip, you're trying to kickflip a six day or something, you're gonna fail and fail again and fail again, and you're gonna have to tweak certain techniques that you use, and this translates over to life. So I'm a huge fan of them. The next question is, Brendan, do you like eating mushrooms? 
which type. So, I mean, I think, uh, you know, like normal mushrooms, like they're probably talking about that you can buy at the grocery store. I'm actually not that big of a fan of them because a lot of them can be contaminated with mold. I'm not opposed to them if you like having some portobellos or something like that, that's whatever. And if you're talking about the other type, I think they can be beneficial in the right setting if you're old enough and it's legal where you are, which it is in Santa Cruz. The next question is, Brendan, is soda bad for runners? Yes, absolutely. I mean, consuming high fructose corn syrup is in, in too much excess is going to cause a lack of bone density, which is going to be really bad for running in general. Obviously, if you're some crazy marathon runner, you're going to burn through a lot of sugar, but there's just still like no benefit of drinking high fructose corn syrup with artificial colors and preservatives. So yeah, it's bad for runners. The next question is, Brennan, do you know a good diet for basketball players? So with any athlete, you're gonna wanna do the Santa Cruz Medicinals diet. What is that? You want to eat a lot of good protein. That means beef, that means chicken, that means fish, that means eggs, that's the basis of your diet. Greek yogurt, good a good protein powder that you like, that's the base of your diet, that's what makes up most of your diet. And then with those meals, you wanna throw in some healthy carbs. I like doing fruit, I like sweet potatoes, I like white rice, I like some veggies. That is really how you make a diet. So you wake up in the morning, maybe you have eggs with some cheese and you have some bone broth. That's a really good you know, breakfast right there. Then maybe you're gonna go to practice. You have a Greek yogurt bowl with a bunch of fruit, some honey. Now you're getting some carbs, some more protein in there. After your practice, you have meat and greens or meat and fruit. And then for dinner, you have meat, fruit, and more carbs with sweet potato or white rice. That's a really good framework right there. Try it out. The next question I actually get a lot is, Brendan, what do you think about like Invisalign or other dental products? The fact that there's some plastics in your mouth, what do you think? So, you know, I do not think obviously there's really any other option, right? So with stuff like that, I wouldn't worry about it too much. Are there microplastics in dental devices that they put into you? Yeah, for sure. Now, should you really worry about this too much? No, if your goal is to wear Invisalign and straighten out your teeth, then what are you gonna do? The next question is, Brennan, my parents are making me take antidepressants and uh, basically they're trying to get off them. Um, obviously this is a complex question, so I'm not really gonna address his question head on. I'm just gonna sort of talk about antidepressants in general. So if I were to go to the doctor and they were to prescribe me antidepressants without doing my vitamin D levels, my hormone panel, ask me if I'm exercising, ask me if I'm sleeping properly, ask me if I have any mold exposure, any you know gut infections, I think that's insane. When we look at the health of the human body and the human brain, the fact that these things aren't taken into account before we give somebody an SSRI is insane. And again, we have somebody here who they don't give you a basic protocol to get off of them. Now, what you would need to do is find somebody very qualified that can help you wean off of these. And you wanna take as best care about your health as you can right now. Get good sleep, exercise, eat good food, do all that, and then try to find somebody that can help you wean off them. But it's, a, it's insanity. It's absolute insanity that kids are given this stuff and they're really not given any protocol to get off them. They're basically told to take them for the rest of their lives. It's sad and it's a clear sign that that system is wrong and it's rigged against you. The next question is, Brennan, what is your opinion on Five Guys Burgers? I was told they cook their burgers without seed oils. I think I need to go check out Five Guys then, ask some of the employees what they cook their burgers in because that would be amazing. I think a protein style burger from there would be a great option, especially if it's not cooked with seed oils. I gotta go check it out. So hold tight on that one. Check out my content because I'm gonna try to go pop in there. Next question is, Brennan, do you have any shampoo and conditioner recommendations? I would say try to get Base Body Works, Lance's company, a very simple ingredient list right there. I think one that's sold at many different stores that I'm comfortable with recommending, I have no affiliation with them whatsoever, is Native. Native has decent ingredients. They do have some fragrance, which probably could hide some parabens and stuff in there, but overall, like as something that's sold everywhere, I think it's a pretty good thing that you can recommend to people. The next question is, Brendan, are microwaves bad? Or are they good to avoid? The answer is no, they're not bad at all. And you know, look, I'm totally into all this, um, you know, non-Western health stuff, right? And holistic health in general, but there is no evidence that microwaves are bad. Now they sort of suck for cooking and like the texture that they produce with a lot of food just kind of sucks. So I prefer to use the oven or air fryer, but a microwave isn't bad for you. Now, as far as standing close to your microwave, that might be bad for you, but it's not doing anything to the food that is going to harm you. It's not putting radiation into the food. It's not doing that. I've read all the studies. Trust me, I'm very skeptical about this stuff. If microwaves were even a little bit bad for you, I wouldn't use them, but they're not. The next question is, Brendan, what do you think about powdered peanut butter? Brands like PB Fit are very popular. Um, personally, I'm not a huge fan of peanut butter just due to the potential mold contamination, but if you can get a good high quality peanut butter without any bad ingredients, I think it's fine. I mean, 
it's a legume, you know, it's not a grain, it's not a seed, it's a legume. There can be mold concerns, but I, I don't know. If you really like PB Fit and you feel good while consuming it, go for it. I don't really have a huge issue with that. I don't I would be interested to see also like a uh, whey protein with PB Fit in it basically, or like powdered peanut butter, uh, powdered peanuts. That could be very tasty, but I'm a little concerned about some of the mold contamination with those products but if you feel good, eat it. The next question is, Brennan, what is your opinion on raw sheep milk? Uh, if you can get a good source of that and it's clean, I think that'd be an amazing source of nutrients, calcium, you know, B vitamins, vitamin A, I think that'd be great. I'm also a fan of goat milk as well. Goat milk is more tolerable for many people. I can drink milk from a cow, I can drink milk from a goat, but yeah, I'm a fan of all that. The next question is, Brennan, when did you get the idea to start Santa Cruz Paleo? So. For those who don't know, Santa Cruz Medicinals has been around for six years. We sell potent CBD infused formulas. We started this company because basically we were making these potent CBD formulas that we were giving to our friends that are pro athletes, stuff like that, and they just loved it. Then we started giving it to people who had pain and injuries and anxiety and stuff like that, and that's really how it started, is just giving them the product. And then my buddy and I were like, well, what if we could sell this online? And we started with the simple goal of, let's try to sell these products to somebody we don't know, right? Because we're all already selling them to people we know. And it worked. People really wanted these products. From there, we realized that CBD is pretty niche. It's for people with pain, anxiety, stress, stuff like that. And we just started experimenting around with certain products that we use every day. And like Food of the Gods, for example, it's like I was taking maca, N-acetylglucosamine, grass-fed beef liver, bone marrow, colostrum, and polyphenol-rich elderberry extract. I was taking this like stack and I started to put some of my friends on it and they were like, dude, I feel so good. This is amazing. This is, this is one of my buddies, this is like a, the Food of the Gods. I'm like, well, I need to sell this. I, who am I to deprive people of this formula? So we started just to create products that we want to use. And when I see sort of a gap in the market, like with electrolytes, I'm like, okay, I think I can make a better electrolyte than Liquid IV or Gatorade or Prime. We do it and we have the ability to do it now. We have our own manufacturing. This isn't some white label stuff. This is made by us. So I love it and it's just been amazing and we're releasing some really cool stuff in the future. Whey protein, ashwagandha and tongat ali are coming soon. More flavors of electrolytes. Working on a pre-workout that's very pump focused with a little bit of focus, uh, like mental focus ingredients in there as well. Super stoked, appreciate all the support and our stuff sells out quick. So go to santacruzpaleo.com, grab some goodies. All right, so that's it for this week's AMA. Leave any questions and comments below and I will get to your questions. I appreciate you so much. Thank you for subscribing, sharing, just tagging your friends, all that type of stuff really helps me so much. So we appreciate it and I'll check in with you guys next week with another AMA.